Thank you for taking time out to have a chat about the program SAMSA has under its welfare units, which is the gender-based violence program. Can you please just take us back a couple of years and tell us why gender-based violence in the maritime sector? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Fayo. Yes, uh, as you know, uh, the seafarer population currently stands at 1.9 million and uh, women seafarers only make 1.3 percent of that so they you can term them the vulnerable group or the minority group at sea we've had instances in south africa a tragic one that we had about 14 10 years ago 10 to 14 years ago uh, that uh, still lingering in our minds and we continue to hear of some of these stories that are not so good but also sometimes you don't need to things to be happening in your doorstep but you learn from what is happening out there there have been these stories the women becoming braver and coming up so in addition to what um, uh, the department of transport has as remember uh, all the entities of the department of transport need now to look at uh, issues of gbv in their strategies, keep of uh, performance uh, reports and all that. So SAMSA has a GPV now as part of the KPIs. So we've within the, as you've mentioned, uh, within the OHS and Maritime Welfare Unit, we have a CIFERA welfare program, and then that's where the GPV program is housed. So. Uh, our GBV program and we've launched, um, it, it has three pillars, which is education, support and enforcement. So we want to educate uh, our people. Uh, remember this also doesn't affect just women, it affects boys. Uh, they also need to know how to protect themselves, how to look at the indicators and, and then that is the education part. Also just education of what um, to the young boys as well, what does impact of uh, gender-based violence, sexual harassment, sexual assault can have on the other gender? Also, boy to boy, so boys they will know if they were if uh, they're doing same to other boys. What effect does it do to those boys? So that will be the training that we want to see. We work together with the Sifera development organizations like SAIME. We want also to work together with them. We want to work together with the many organizations and recruiters. And then we have the part that is, uh, we call it support. Uh, we employ a welfare officer, a social worker by profession, a trauma counselor, training trauma counseling. So that when we have these cases, we can then refer to him and for, for counseling or for handling, and then he can have a, a refer, he can refer where, where necessary. So we also have, a, we're also looking at enforcement because the deed has been done and we need to, as SAMSA, we need to be able, once we investigated, to go back to the companies and, and address and the shortcomings and within our, our regulation, which was not easy, uh, but things are, are looking very promising. 
Um, the South African Initiative uh, by SAMHSA, much as it is um, a KPA, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, as you indicated earlier, but it, 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 it's a necessary uh, program to undertake because mm -hmm. I do recall that, and maybe you would want to reflect on mm -hmm. that, the uh, inaugural seminar that took place in October 2022. Yes. Um, I got a sense that we actually have a serious problem involving CFLs broadly in South mm -hmm. Africa mm -hmm. when it comes to GBV. Is that the case? Yes, yes, thank you very much for that. Yes, we, we hosted the inaugural seminar. It was part of the, as I said, we've got three legs in our GBV program, part of educating and creating awareness. Uh, because we can sit down and say we have zero cases reported, but people don't know SAMHSA is available for them. So the aim of the, of the seminar was to say, we are here, let's hear if these things are happening, and SAMHSA is here for you, you can be able to report these things. So we, had, we hosted that seminar, we had international guests, uh, well supported, and painful stories came up, and also solutions came up and proposals of how to tackle this, which means uh, as SAMHSA, we also had a challenge to play, but we still also want to encourage those who are victims to be able to come up. We have a, a, a hotline uh, or a helpline, as I say, which is in the form of an email at the moment. Uh, it's a very discreet and it's being manned by our welfare officer. So you are able to report this incident discreetly and deal with somebody who's well versed on issues of GBV, training those issues, training trauma counseling, who's able to listen and handle these cases. So we had hoped that after the the seminar will see more people coming up. If it's zero, we're happy. If it's not happening, but if it's happening, we want them to come up, to come forward, you know. So we continue to create uh, this awareness and we have a program also that we want to work with uh, SAIMI on work readiness program. So when uh, SAIMI would be the South African International Maritime Union. Yes, uh, the custodian yes. of the South African Seafood Development Program so that we can then be part of their work readiness program when they prepare the cadets for life at sea, then we can be able to send our welfare officer to be able to speak to the young boys and girls before they get on board the vessels. But what we are we are trying to say is I know some people get worried when we talk about educating and especially don't us to touch educate girls. But we're not saying to girls must wear long skirts. We're not saying that. We're just teaching them that these are girls, if you recall, these girls also come from rural areas we, we, we most of our seafarers we recruit from those areas. So they've never, as much as we're a multicultural country, but they've never been exposed uh, to people probably from overseas, different countries, different cultures, different behaviors who come from areas where touching is, to them, it's not frowned upon, but in South Africa it's frowned upon. So we need to guide the, the young girls to say, these limits must be set from day one, so they will understand we don't come from the particular region. Yeah. So your work at SAMHSA, as South Africa, is not just limited to um, um, the country itself. Um, you are part of an international joint technical working group. Well, when I say you, I'm talking mm -hmm. we as South Africans. Yes, um, and it had its inaugural meeting in London in February. This is a joint technical working group established by the International Labour Organization together with the uh, International Maritime Organization. Just talk to us about that. What is that about? Yes, around 2020 we started having, uh, there was a, a Me Too campaign, you know, we've all seen it and women were encouraged to come forward. They started coming forward, studies, uh, all over the world indicating that there is a problem at sea and then the IMO and the ILO decided to form this joint technical working group to deal to identify the gaps in the regulation first and if we can have any mechanism that we can introduce or some guidelines so this was the first attempt so the meeting as you as you correctly pointed out was first held in February at the IMO headquarters so South Africa was nominated to be part of the eight countries in the world uh, to to be developing this guide to form part of this uh, 
technical working group and develop the guidelines, identify the gaps uh, for the whole maritime world. Uh, South Africa also we presented our program. Uh, we were the only government group that made a presentation at the event. Uh, the message also we were passing was that we are not trying to make ourselves look like we are good people. We also have a vested interest because the majority of our cadetship who are joining the industry are actually females. You know, so we also have that responsibility. So it, the, 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 the workshop, the, the working group actually worked very well and it identified first uh, order of business was to settle on the issue of uh, definitions. Yeah. So naming convention, what do we call, what is it harassment? We calling it uh, bullying and harassment. Because previously we've called this bullying and harassment. We actually have a guideline from the International Chamber of Shipping and the uh, ITF, which is bullying and, and, and harassment guidelines. But we wanted to call it what it is. If it's sexual assault, sexual harassment. So the, 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 the working group adopted the naming the definitions that are contained in the Convention C-190, which deal with uh, harassment uh, in the workplace, and South Africa is party to the Convention. So we've ratified the Convention. We have a code in South Africa that is uh, mirroring the, 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 the Convention. So we've adopted, we'll use the word say, bullying, violence, sexual harassment, sexual assault. So that needs to go into the IMO instruments, uh, whether you're talking MLC and, and, and uh, your STCW. But the committee cannot dictate on what needs to happen. It can only recommend. So the committee has recommended the adoption of the terminology and the committee as well uh, recommended uh, some amendments to the STCW uh, so that issues of, uh, remember now, it's not just boys and girls, uh, people of different sexual orientations. We need to consider all that. So in issues of inclusivity. So now the proposal is that issues of inclusivity, issues of diversity, issues of sexual assault, issues of uh, sexual harassment must be part of competence. So it will be part of your education, part of your training, but it has not been established whether it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Yes, and then you also have the the International Safety Management Code, which deal with issues, issues of occupational health and safety on board the ships, issues of safety. So the group uh, also resolved that you locate the issues of sexual welfare within the OHS because it does affect issue, mental health and it does affect safety on board the vessel. So they were at the moment. Because there are some work that is taking place on the ISM code, the group did not recommend changes, but it recommends that in the guidelines of the code, we can make some uh, arrangement to, to am amendments to incorporate issues of sexual assault, sexual harassment. So we are looking at this in the in the uh, broadly. We also going into the we went into the Maritime Labour Convention. Uh, so that we have the responsibilities for shippers is very, must be very clear. Issues of policies on board the vessel, reporting structures, and there was also a suggestion to have uh, some uh, uh, something similar to the sex offenders list, but that was uh, did not go through because we would appreciate that we have different laws in different countries. We handle the issue differently, and so it was it, it was shared. I do remember that specific one. Um, it, it's one of those that came out during the um, inaugural South African seminar. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, actually from South Africa uh, during the seminar it did come out uh, even though we were not the ones who raised it at the, at the international platform. Uh, another country raised it but we, it was agreed that it's, uh, it takes uh, we have different uh, legal systems when it comes to this issue. We are we, we are all not members of the C-190 convention as well, so there were complications and at the moment it was shelved, but it's but the reporting of incidents, right, there is a recommendation that says we need to be re reporting this to the IMO on an annual basis. So there will be something that will go to the IMO. But it, it's important also to mention that the, as I mentioned in the committee itself, uh, the working group itself, it's not a lawmaking, 
uh, where I can I will recommend to the Maritime Safety Committee. And then when it comes to the Maritime Labor Convention, individual countries need to take up this with the, at the Special Tripartite Committee in, in the, at the ILO. There is one that is sitting uh, in 2025, in April. So as South Africa, we will be convening our team because we've already been uh, sounded out by some countries uh, who wants us to approach this issue because we've aligned with a lot of countries. Like in the working group, South Africa was aligned with the US, was aligned with France, and we had the same ambition and same vision for what needs to happen. So countries have been contacting us going into the STC uh, next year at the ILO. Just to be clear, so on, the, on this committee that we're talking about, which I think it's a great um, um, initiative, uh, the composition, um, it's not just member states of the ILO or IMO, but it's also re representative of employers, it's also representative of labor naturally, is this yeah, the case? Yeah, no, this is very important, it's a very important day. Firstly, let me, something I've missed out is that as South Africa was, or we were chairing, I think I mentioned that, we were chairing the government side. So it's a, ILO works differently to the IMO. IMO is member states who make decisions. When you come to the ILO, they have a tripartite system, whereby you have government representative, you have employers representative, and then you have seafarers representative. So in this committee, you had eight member states, you had eight employer representative and eight seafarer representative. So inclusivity. Inclusivity. But what was pleasing was that we never argued on the very important points. Everyone was of the same view, same spirit that it's about time that we handle this. So I will give it to the owners especially. Uh, they supported all the initiatives. Which brings me to the question of the initiative, or rather the, uh, the uh, proposal, because mm -hmm. now this was mm -hmm. a specific proposal as, to, uh, as opposed to just being a recommendation, but mm -hmm. a specific proposal on the launch of an international campaign. Um, I, I think, that, well, it does say that it's to raise awareness on the addressing of the violence and harassment in the maritime sector, including sexual harassment, bullying, and sexual assault. But, yeah, we've got so many of this campaign. Why would, why, well, why another campaign? And why was it important? Yeah, especially, you know, South Africa was cited as one of the good examples uh, because of the campaign that we, we actually okay. represented. The presentation was based on the campaign that we had, the seminar that we held in 2022. So the IMO realized that this is becoming a bigger issue. And as I mentioned, they look at this broadly, not just saying violence to kids, looking at boys, they're looking at the bullying as well, to incorporate bullying, they're looking at people of different sexual identity or identify themselves differently sexually. So they felt that this issue has reached a stage and, and I IMO has, uh, I mean the IMO has experience in this. So they the feel it's rich to have uh, another campaign of this nature. And there were suggestions that it must be uh, during the International Day of No Violence Against Women and Children, but it was suggested this issue now is gone beyond just women, it's also affecting boys. So let's keep it as a separate event uh, in the calendar of the IMO. And uh, it's a, remember it's IMO and ILO, but it was agreed that ILO, IMO has experience in these events and they need to lead on this. So I, they, will, they look for funding from countries and countries like France have already indicated interest in funding such projects. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So um, coming back now to South Africa and SAMSA, um, and this being the KPM, I'm going to go back to that. You obviously have plans. What plans have we got going forward, say for 2024? or whatever period into the future? Okay, firstly, we are continuing with our campaign that because this approach, the approach at the ILO is was part of our strategy to be uh, insert ourselves in this dialogue because we, we understand that our seafarers are not just working in South Africa, they are working somewhere in the world. So we can make all the noises and put all the regulations in South Africa, but they are not here on our ships. We don't have a good... Uh, uh, big enough tonnage so to accommodate them. So we needed everyone in the world to be on the same page. So we, that hence we wanted to play into the space, influence this at a global level. And then 
what we do also as a global citizen in the maritime, we not just focus on South Africans. In the ports, we visit the ships. When they're in the port, we, we develop a, a brochure that teaches people on issues of uh, gender-based violence at sea. That brochure has been very welcomed by the by the visiting crew members. You know, they've given the people have spoken to us on the side crew members to say hey, South Africa is progressive actually. Uh, we were very, we were not sure, I mean, uh, how this is going to be received, but it has been very well received. So we go on board, we talk to the management, and some of, most of them, they'll say they will take it up during the safety meetings on board. But also what we want to do is we continue to create awareness, and we want to, we want to create a, a portal uh, to link to our now well-known blog, uh, where we You're we talking about the Samsa blog? The Samsa blog, the yes. The 10th province? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so we are, we, we are, because that is a good reach, so for us it's a platform that we want to use. We want to reach our seafarers wherever they are to be able to, when they miss home, they can go to Samsa website and find information, whether it's on mental health, whether it's financial management, whether it's on the changes in the regulations within within the space, maybe jobs, uh, other things. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, we'll have articles and we would like to see our seafarers also sharing their stories on these blogs, wow. telling us about the, their journey or whatever they are in the world. So that's what we are. Also, if we can have, um, we are thinking of a, a, the, the, to be able to report within the portal itself, to be able to reach out, to reach our welfare officer, Beshwani as well. So that's the work that we are focusing on beginning this month of April. Hopefully in the next three months we'll have a portal up That's and running. just fantastic. That's fantastic. School. Well, thank you very much for taking your time up. But before we wrap up, uh, I just want to go back to the pamphlet issue. I've seen one. It's well designed and everything, but it's in only one language. Um, what is that based on? It's in the English language. Is it, be, is it because predominantly the people in these vessels from different countries understand the language? Or is it just a short-term limitation? Yes, I would say it's a, this was a first attempt for us. So we are learning, we are getting the responses as you were mentioning. But also English is a shipping language. So we are expected to, to speak in English. But as we and read it as well, and read it as well, because most of the instructions are in English. Anyway, so we've started with English. But if we want to reach everyone, there are nationalities that we know they make it a biggest number on board. They might not be very fluent in the language. So in the future, we look forward to expand uh, in terms of uh, language offering. Uh, obviously. Um Predominant crew usually are Indian, Philippines, and those kind of countries. Yes, yeah, so when you when you look at those countries, that's another determination. That's what also why we went for English because we already have the majority. The Philippines they are fluent in English. You have your Indians which are fluent in English, but then you have your other growing uh, the bases that are growing like your Chinese, uh, which we might require that we actually uh, offer that language as well. So, final question. When can we look forward to another in-house gathering such as the seminar we had? We are working on a, what we call a, a maritime welfare seminar. So, a two-day event. First day we look into fishers. We don't want to forget our fishers. Then we have, on the second day, we'll concentrate on the seafarers, on the conventional vessels. So there, we will, there will be an element of GBV, but we will be looking at mental health broadly. It's, it's another uh, topical issue now. A uh, lot of papers have been written about mental, especially post-COVID. So we want to tackle that issue and see what is happening and how we can arm our seafarers as well going forward. So we expect to have it also, to host it within the next three months. We're trying to align with the fishing season so that we can have ordinary fishers as well be part of the of the of the seminar. Fantastic. So thank you very much. And this is uh, the first, I hope not the last, uh, engagement we're gonna have with you for this platform so that we continue to share information that is relevant to seafarers and the maritime sector broadly on an ongoing basis. We are going to follow up with you.
we're gonna hold you responsible for it because you promised it. But thank you for your time. No, thank you. It's really appreciated. Do hold us uh, accountable and we'd really like to engage with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.